Welcome back to the Mail-In Podcast. It is a lovely, lovely day outside, Sally DeFreeze. I am your host, Brett Merriman, and I just mentioned her name, but again, the equally as lovely Sally DeFreeze next to me. How are you, Sally? I'm very cold, hence my washed sweatshirt. Shouts? Uh, Washmedia.shop. Not because of the temperature outside. It's pretty nice out. 70. Mm. Uh, I just came from the OR where it was like a crisp 59. Ooh, that's that's too cold. It's too cold. And I do this thing. I started getting in trouble for this, actually. So I've got scrubs on, and then I've got my jacket. Mm-hmm. And what I'll do is I'll just take a, a blanket from the blanket warmer. Phenomenal, by the way. And I'll just wrap it around my waist like a towel, and then I'll zip my jacket up. So I just like walk around with like a, a blanket skirt on. Nice. And they got mad at me because like, the blankets are for patients. Blankets for the patients. You shouldn't be using them. But like, I can't function at fifty nine degrees. I no. I feel like doing surgery, and also, um, anesthetizing people. How's that for that verb? Anesthetizing. Yeah, that's. Uh, nice. I feel like you're you're like your fingers can't be cold, My right? Toes were straight up numb. Uh, the thing is, so the the reason I keep OR so cold is because it helps fight infection. Bacteria makes, can't it makes grow sense, yeah. In colder environments, but also because the surgeons get really cold because they're under big bright lights and have a bunch of like sterile equipment mm-hmm. on, so they can get really hot and they'll always oh. complain. Uh, like I'm up top by your head, just. Freezing. It's chilling. Freezing my little D off. Freezing your little D off. Oh, that's also, I think, remember there was an article that came out that um, workplaces are programmed to um, men's specificities. Yeah. And we operate at about four degrees colder. That's where our peak performance is versus women. Yeah. And so we just kind of we won that cultural battle. Yeah, our, yeah, our sorry, house is that. Sorry about that. I want our house to be cold. Like, I'm mm-hmm. happy with like... A 71, 72 situation. Obviously, even okay. numbers are better than odds or multiples of five. But Will liked it at a crisp 68. And um, at night, that's fine. Okay. But like while I'm just like walking around, like trying to get ready for bed and stuff, like I'm freezing. Yeah, I'm with your husband on this. I will. So now that I have a a nest thermostat that mm-hmm. I can really dial in like where the, time where and the times and the temps are, if it gets to 72... I will physically notice it, mm-hmm. and I'll go into my app and be like, "Yep, it's seventy-two, and click it down to sixty-nine or sixty-eight." Those are my two my two numbers: sixty-eight when I'm sleeping, sixty-nine for living. Seventy yeah. in the summer. It's too, it's too cold, but now I'm worried I'm getting yeah. too hot in this thing. So we'll see. It's cozy for now. Obviously, I just yawned a little bit, so maybe I'll just take a nap. It's one of those yeah, one of those days. We didn't have the lights on here all day. It's kind of, you know, sometimes your teachers would keep the lights off in the classroom. Little sleepy vibes today at Wash Media, but we'll bring it. We'll bring the heat here. Yeah. On the Mail-In Podcast. By the way, we are the Mail-In Podcast. We answer questions, get a laugh in, uh, maybe walk away with something useful. A lot of good questions today. How can you help us out? Please tell a friend about the podcast. Send them a clip. We got those coming out. Shouts to Adam. Subscribe on iTunes and follow on Spotify. Please hit the hotline number, leave a voicemail. We have one of those today, 888-362-MAIL. That's 888-362-6245. Or you can write in at the link in the Twitter bio at Mail-In Podcast or at the bottom of this episode. Like I mentioned before, please hit up our new store, washmedia.shop, and our new YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash mailin podcast. Sally, are you ready to get after it? Yes. Hey, Brett and Sally. To keep things really short, do I tell someone I don't know that well that her boyfriend is cheating on her? Here's the deal. I know for a fact that he cheated on her, as in had another girl stay at his place for an extended period of time, introduced the other girl as his girlfriend, goes on dates, etc., the issue is that I don't really know her well at all. Like I've only met her a couple of times and I go to graduate school with her boyfriend. Kind of caught between not wanting to get involved in someone else's business, but also knowing that I would want to know if I were her. Sally, sticky situation here. My usual as, rule for as this the third party. is like, if you're not involved, as in like you're not the one 
he's cheating with, mm. I, I don't get involved. But it, my caveat to that is if you know him well enough, I think you always go the, hey, we know you're cheating. Like mm-hmm. you're friends with him. So you're like, we know you're yeah. cheating on your girlfriend and you need to tell her or else I'm going to tell her type situation. Go. Yeah, a little ultimatum. But, it doesn't sound like she's even close enough with this guy to do that. No, it sounds like a, it's almost like she stumbled upon this in her new like grad school friend group. Right. Yeah, I, I tend to be with you. I, I don't like to get involved in this type of thing. But it also like if I if it's my best friend, that then it's a different story. But the the spectrum of how well you know this person, I think, impacts your decision here. Because Here's the issue. It's like if she tells the girlfriend, like, hey, he's cheating on you. I saw her. I saw him go home with this girl. He's introduced her as his girlfriend, et cetera. Then you have to, like, corroborate all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Because, like, why would she trust a random stranger over her significant other? Truthfully, why would anybody, like, lie about cheating in the first place? Yeah. Seems like a a, a like, lot to, to. A Justin Bieber fan you're trying to, like break up him and Haley or something. I don't know. Good luck. But like, you know, like if you're not close with her, who, who is she going to believe? And, and then you have to deal with all the semantics of like, okay, now she's going to like go to the boyfriend and be like, I was told all this by what's her name. Mm -hmm. You go to grad school with, and then you're involved in this really sticky situation that like maybe is not going to like self-serve you. And I know that that, is not the right thing to say, probably like being selfish over like someone else's well being. Yeah, I know. But if you're I this is this is one of those, Sally, I'm gonna be dead honest with you. I wouldn't say a word and I know that's not the right thing to do. And it's that's just me. Like I would let it go. I would tell him that I think that's a shitty thing to do and probably give that sort of ultimatum. Yeah. With the idea that I wouldn't follow up on it but just be like hey if if she comes around again or or if you don't tell your girlfriend i will sort yeah. of a hollow threat but just putting that seed in his mind that like hey oh this girl's gonna fuck my relationship up even though i'm the one fucking my relationship up like that's i i just i'm, I'm being honest with you here i i can't i couldn't get involved in something like this what with if, being that far away from the, the what if they've got like a a baby? A grad? No, no, no. Oh. What if there's like a, a grad school event, like a formal or like a, a Christmas Ooh. party or something mm-hmm. that the girlfriend's at, and then you just drop a sly like, oh. oh, I thought his girlfriend was blonde. Ooh, and you really mix the pot up. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Like, especially if, if you- Oh my God, I thought her name was Jessica. Wait, oh my God, what's your name? Oh, hi, Jessica. Ju- Julia, right? Oh. No, we met. We met like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, at the thing. You're his girlfriend, right? Yeah, I. I you could play that card. No, okay. Yeah, don't do that either. I think it. It just totally depends on how close you are to these people. Mm-hmm. You've clearly not met the girlfriend enough to like probably have a conversation with her. Right. But also, like, are you close enough with the guy to like confront him about it? Because mm-hmm. I'm not saying you blackmail this guy or like threaten him. I'm just saying like. If it's your if you're one of your guy friends and you're like, hey, this is pretty shitty, like I think you should stop cheating on your girlfriend and maybe let her know what you're doing. Yeah. And like to uh to like kind of wrap up here, you they could you don't know what's going on behind the scenes there too. They could be broken up too. Like if there's a break situation, maybe I don't they're know. They're in an open relationship like last week. They could be backers and, and <laughs> maybe this is the third person. Yeah. It's like, whoa, they're they're in an open relationship. It's just it's Sticky. It's hard to meddle in other people's shit. Agreed. Especially when you have like no relationship with either of them. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a whole lot to gain here from your personal vantage point, right? It's, right. So if you're not best friends with these people, I stay away. Maybe like that's I'm not just the, thinking right now, if someone random do, I, came up to me and was like, Will's cheating on you. Hmm. I'd be like, "What? How do you know him? Like, yeah. what? Like, what? Like, I, I think there would be so many questions, and like, who are you going to trust—the person you don't know or the person you do know?" Right, and then there's just a lot of corroboration that has to happen. It's, yeah, 
I don't. Kind of becomes one of those like guilty till proven innocent things, and then then nobody ends up in a good spot. Right? You know what? Don't cheat. How about yeah? Cross the the answer to that question. Um, There's no easy way to transition. And I was just saying, you know, but if you are going to (laughs) cheat. Throw on, doing a pair I don't of Rothies. think that we need to like make Rothies the official shoe I, of I don't, cheating. I don't think we should do that either. And I don't think that they they are they are not. They are not the official the shoe. The official of shoe of faithful people. The official shoe of faithful people. Yeah. Faithfully. Good journey song. Great Rothies shoe. Rothies, where where do you want to begin with Rothies, Sally? They're comfortable. They're machine washable. They look good on everything. They're a staple of my fall wardrobe. It's layer season. I don't know if you can tell. Mm-hmm. Layering, shouts to Rothy's, who I can layer anything with because it looks so good. Casual sneakers, yep. Driving loafers, yep. Driving loafers with little tassels on them for fall, and they're they're made out of wool. You kidding me right now? Rothy's is my fall wardrobe. Biggest compliment, Sally. You're a fan, right? I'm a big fan. They're very comfortable. Say goodbye to the break-in period you usually have to go through with other shoes. They're soft, flexible material, and wildly comfortable insoles make them one of the most wearable shoes right out of the box. If dirty sneakers are your greatest pet peeve, rest easy. Rothy's shoes are 100% machine washable thanks to their sustainably made material. So, never have to worry about dirtying them up. They're knit with 100% recycled materials. Even the sneaker laces are made from recycled single-use plastic bottles. Are you kidding me? No wonder Rothy's best-selling men's shoes get a five-star review from almost every customer. And to top it all off, Men's Health named the RS01 sneaker one of the top three sustainable sneakers during their 2022 Sneaker Awards. Did you go to that happy hour, Sally? I didn't. You missed. I missed it too. This season, find out why people fall hard for Rothy's, see what they did there? Mm-hmm. With new shoes, bags, and more for everybody, you can snag something for yourself or someone you love. For a limited time, get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash mail. That's $20 off at R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash mail. How about a voicemail, Sally? All right. Talk about a situation. So I'm 25, and I just got a dog about eight months ago. The family that I got the dog from, I happened to start talking to one of the daughters for a while, and we went on a couple of dates, probably talked for a month or two, and low-key got ghosted. Now I'm talking to another girl, and she's interested in getting a dog. It just so happens that this family has another batch of golden retriever dogs, and this girl has already made contact with the mom about possibly looking at one. Do I go with this girl to go say, yeah, it's a good dog? And kind of, you know, say what's up to the old chick that goes to me, or do I let her go by herself, or what do I do? Let me know. Thank you. Okay. Dude got ghosted. Now his girlfriend wants a dog from his ex girlfriend. The way that you wrote this in the rundown, I was like not expecting the voicemail to go that way. Ooh, okay. So I'm a little taken aback. Okay, here's, I got to get some questions answered. He's got a golden retriever. That's eight months old. Correct. A year old, probably. <clears throat> the family he got the golden retriever from has a daughter that he hooked up with. Yep. Okay. He, so that quite the meet cute, quite the hallmark meet cute in that okay. situation. She ghosts him. Golden retriever breeder daughter ghosted guy. Okay. And then now he's with a new girl. Yep. She wants a puppy. Did mm-hmm. she find out about the breeder from him? Sounds like she brought like the the Instagram of the breeder and was like, oh, this is the dog I want. Like this is the kind of golden that I'm looking for. And he's like, oh yeah, okay. Okay, so if she doesn't know the connection, you got to disclose the connection. Ooh, do you? I think en- just disclose that you got your dog from there, not like that you hooked up with the daughter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. like, it's- oh maybe that's maybe that's that that makes so much more sense. If she's like, where'd you get your dog? He's like, oh, this breeder. She's right. like, oh, now I want one. Right, right. Okay. Is that what he did? I'm assuming. Maybe maybe that makes more sense, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're getting dog cousins or brothers or whatever. Potentially. I think you can go with her. Like, I don't know. It just depends on how involved the situation was of the girl that ghosted you. Like, if the girl ghosted you and you don't want to see her again, I would just, like, steer clear, let her get the dog and, like. <laughs> like, like you go to pick up the dog and be like, no, I'll, I'll wait in the car. <laughs> Also, no, you but you two, just don't you, go with her. Yeah, just say, "Oh, that's your dog." Like I have my dog. 
Yeah. You know what? Uh, we don't. We're not going to get two dogs. Here's the thing. This guy's 25. Okay, everything when you're 25 is awkward. Yeah. Yeah. True. This is not that awkward. All you have to say to this girl is like, "Oh, I got my dog from there too. Hooked up with the daughter a couple times." Nice. We stop. Stop talking. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's the move. I don't think it has to. You don't. We don't have to make this weird. Kinda I can have feel a the can, history with what's her face. Yeah, from with, the dog breeder. With Jessica from the dog breeder. Mm-hmm. Or you just don't mention it, and then likely it's never going to get mentioned again. True. It's not like you're going to be best friends with the dog breeder, and the mom's going to bring like the dog breeder mom's going to be like, oh, like <laughs> the mom's like, oh, what happened? Misses you. What happened to you? You used to come around here all the time. Yeah. So like, like, oh, your daughter ghosted me, ma'am. Like now I'm if, here with if another If you one. had like a full blown relationship and were engaged to the dog breeder daughter. I would be like, maybe disclose that. But like, you went on a couple of days and she goes, did you? Like, this sounds more like a pride thing. Like, maybe yeah, you're upset like, you got ghosted. Oof. I don't know. I just don't see this as like <clears throat> a social situation that's problematic. Yeah, this is this one's an easy one. Just just also, take, your, take your medicine. I'm like, go how get the serious dog. are you about the girl who's trying to get a dog that's, you know, brothers with your dog? Like, you see a future with her. You feel like mm. you got to disclose every, all your exes, or like, or like, what if she's just a random that happens to have a brother dog with your dog, and then like you ghost her in three months? Then the dogs aren't happy about that because they're yeah. bros, literally, and they're like, "Oh, dude, where's where's Jim? He used to come around." But like, do you like? I, I don't even know all the people that. Why would I know who like Will's been like hooked up with and ghosted? <laughs> What, I'm just picturing Will like following some dog on Instagram. You're like, who's that? It's like, oh, it's my ex's, my ex's dog. dog. The only time that this ever gets brought up is like when we go back to Michigan. He's like, oh, like, yeah, we may see this girl tonight. Like, she's friends with so and so. Like, we like, we like hooked up a couple of times. I'm like, okay, like, that doesn't matter to me. Sure. Okay. Speaking I don't of know. speaking of ghosting. Oh. Okay. Hey, y'all. I'm a woman in my mid 30s. Oh, and this isn't the ghosting one. Okay. Yeah. I'll do the, we can do the ghosting one uh, later. Maybe I didn't do the ghosting one this episode. Yeah. Anyway. This has nothing to do with There's a good ghosting. ghosting one that I will do in a, in a future episode. Hey, y'all. I'm a woman in my mid 30s. I've been happily married to my husband for five years. Okay. Pretty straightforward. But wait. I've always thought I was straight and I've only dated men, but as I've unlearned some internal stigmas and basically gotten to know myself better, I would now call myself bi. So my question is, since I plan on staying married, is it even worth it to come out to my husband, my family, and my friends? How would you guys react if a friend in a similar situation came out? Appreciate you. First of all, the fact that People that listen to the show are comfortable enough to share that with us. It's so cool. Like, yeah. I love our listeners. And thank you for, because I'm sure that's not like an easy sentence to write out, even though it is anonymous. But that's awesome. That is so cool that you trust us enough to say and like get our opinion on things. So, And that you know yourself well enough. And that you know yourself well enough to do so. So thank you for doing that. And I am proud of you. Second of all, how do we answer the question? Okay, I have two thoughts that are kind of competing. Number yeah. one, your husband, more than anybody, especially since you seem to be in a happy marriage that you plan on staying in, mm -hmm. should be the person that you like trust the most in the world. Sure. Love, trust, honor, cherish, respect, etc. If anything, I think coming out to him or explaining this is worth it because he knows you like mm -hmm. he's your soul, but not your soulmate. I don't know what, what, whatever you feel like about soulmates, whatever, but your first he's mate. your partner. He is your, like the person you're doing life with. He is your friend. He's your confidant. He's your husband. He's mm -hmm. all of those things should be the person that you trust most in the world. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to tell that person, then don't tell anyone else. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I sure. think it's worth it. To tell him, okay? Mm -hmm. Because personally, at least with Will and I, like any major feeling he's having yeah. or um, 
life event or, you know, realization or whatever it may be, whether it's about his sexuality or, you know, his like mental state or even if it's like what he fucking ate that day, I want to know about. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because you guys are your partners. We're partners. Yeah. We're equals. Um, here's my competing thought, yeah. my caveat. Are you secure enough? Uh, you really don't need to be responsible for his feelings, okay? Yeah. You should, she should tell him if she feels strongly about it. And yeah. she clearly does because she wrote into us about it. But is that going to make him all insecure and weird? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think if I were in the same shoes with Will, Will and I have the type of relationship where he would support me and be like, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Like, but is he going to get all weird and be like, okay, well, are you going to like try to leave me for a woman now? Or like, you know, it's, you got to kind of gauge. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But again, back to what I said, you're not responsible for his feelings. Just like mm -hmm. anybody who's coming out, it's not your responsibility to. <clears throat> Make sure that they're comfortable with what you're trying to tell them. You have to be comfortable with you, mm -hmm. and then you tell other people, and they can do with that what they want. But right. like, you're not in charge of making sure that your parents and your best friend and your husband or your child or whatever are mm -hmm. cool with whatever you're about to tell them. Right. Like, if you feel strongly about it and you're okay with it and you're at peace with it, you do you. Agreed. And I think the first thing that comes to mind here is is kind of in the you you touched on a little bit is that it does like it does it's the same thing to me as you know if you're in a relationship and you're worried about them being attracted to somebody else more than you there's just like a trust disconnect there mm -hmm. but if you're secure enough in it and you do you trust the person like you like you should if you're in a relationship to me it just kind of be like oh okay. You know, like it, it's one thing, especially with a with a a bias situation. Now, if it's like, hey, I like totally like the opposite sex and am not into you anymore. Into you, that's a different story here. But right. I don't think that's the situation that's happening. Right, because like realistically, what's going to change in your relationship? Like nothing. You may see a girl that you're attracted to, just like if you mm -hmm. saw a guy that you were attracted to. Like, is that? Does that mean you feel like, oh, I'm like cheating on my husband because I saw this guy and he's like really attractive and like I have like kind of like a low key crush on him, but like I'm never going to act on it. <clears throat> right. But what's changing there that you're now thinking that about females as well? Yeah, nothing. And I think it's now there's a, a spectrum here. Like if you are saying, hey, I'd want to date a girl at the same time as I'm married to you, that's a conversation you have to have if you want to. You know, there, if, if anything of that sort is different than saying like, oh, I am attracted to girls too. I have a crush on, like on so-and-so or whatever that you're not going to Or just I on. find women attractive. Uh, right. Exactly. Exactly. And I think you're right in that case is that it makes sense to disclose this to your most trusted person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't... <sighs> It's all it's all about what you want to do. If you mm -hmm. want to do that and you feel comfortable with it and you want to come out to your family, you want to come out to your friends, like she asks, how would you guys react? I I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't react any different than somebody's being like, How was your day? It's just like, oh, cool. Like you are you do you. I think this is all kind of also dependent on the wording. Because mm -hmm. I like in twenty twenty two, are we mostly as like our generation and the generations after us like more just attracted to like people yeah you know i i think that that is a lot more common like just being like i'm i feel like i hear a lot of people say that it's like i'm attracted to the person the personality not yeah. like the gender mm -hmm. i think that that is so much more prevalent than we realize so mm -hmm. i'm like to me I feel like that seems more – if if somebody came up to me and said that that I loved, that I was either best friends with or one of my siblings or Will, I'd be like, okay. Mm -hmm. But if you're like – it's almost like people get so wrapped up in their own shit and their own uh, preconceived notions that like that's where people are going to react. Because totally. like I know that if I told my parents – who may or may not be listening to this episode, who knows, like, mm -hmm. oh, I, you know, I'm attracted to, like, all 
races, creeds, genders, et cetera, like they're going to understand that a lot less than somebody who's my age. Mm -hmm. Totally. Because of the generational differences mm -hmm. and like the way that they were brought up to believe things. Mm -hmm. That's just the world that we live in. But it's at the same time, like, exactly to my point earlier, like, is that my responsibility to make sure that they understand me? Yeah, that's like hurtful mm -hmm. when they don't. And that can be really scary. But at the same time, like, if it's not going to change the nature, I mean, even if it is, even if you're coming out and like you want to divorce your husband, like you said, like that's just yeah. a whole different conversation. But right. I think there's a lot less to consider here if it's not going to change your nature of relationship with anybody. Like, absolutely. Like, that's the whole. How, like, how is them getting to know you better going to be <clears throat> hurtful? Agreed. And that's the whole thing. I think that's kind of like the line in the sand here is if, if you plan on coming out, but you want to stay married, you don't plan on. You don't, you're not trying to date anybody of the opposite gender. You're not trying to add somebody to this relationship. And you're just like, hey, I, I'm also into girls. Yeah. Th that Then nothing changes. So and then it's worth it. If it's a bigger conversation than that, then it's a bigger conversation than that. Right. It's still worth it. But like there's obviously going to be a lot more complication there. Sure. I, you know, I think that this is interesting because we spend a lot of our time – you know, growing up in certain environments, being really influenced by our parents and the people around us, et cetera. And then you spend your 20s trying to like figure shit out <laughs> and learn yourself. Mm -hmm. And then in your 30s, I feel like it's really when you start understanding who you are as a person and like what you want from life and what's important to you. And I really don't feel like I knew that about myself till I was probably really late 20s or 30s. Mm -hmm. And so, what an interesting thing to be like, my sexuality is changing. Yeah. And I think that I, you know, it does it get easier to like know? It, like, that's my question is like, you know, w when you're 15 and you know, like, okay, I'm a girl and I'm into girls, mm -hmm. is that easier to like come out then so that then you can like live the rest of your life that way? Or is it easier to like come out when you are a little bit older and mature and you, not that you like need to be mature to come out, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. When you're know yourself, but you've like lived three decades one way. And I guess there's no really right answer. Cause I think that people learn more about themselves every day. Like mm -hmm. there's people who come out and they're like eighties, <clears throat> you know, like, yeah. People get divorced after 50 years of marriage. And right. Like, oh, I, it's, it's the same thing. Go. I was going to say the same thing about divorce. It's like, yeah. what's the difference of like, you get, you know, you look at your friends who like parents got divorced when they were like two versus like people's parents got divorced when they were like 30 and like mm -hmm. how it has impacted those people so much, but in different ways. Yeah. A hundred percent. Wow. Human, the humans, man. We're, we're quite the bunch. It's hard to think of robots having these issues. I mean. Sally's attracted to robots. No, I'm just here. saying like, I obviously know this is a whole other freaking tangent. Oh, let's like, go. You know, AI mm -hmm. and like eventually, like are we assuming that robots are going to become like self-aware? But like I'm, maybe I'm afraid. Are. I'm afraid that they are. I'm afraid that there's going to be think, a point where we have Now no I'm like return. in a whole thing, like are we in a simulation where there's like robots who are controlling it? <laughs> just kidding. I just think. Just a turn. <sighs> This is going to be quite the aside. I think that we're not in a simulation, but we're in an equation, if that makes sense. So I think everything... Randy's rolling his eyes. I think everything that has happened can be put down on a piece of paper. And I think everything that will happen can be maybe not exactly calculated, but you can model the future. Much like the weather. Based on... No. Because humans aren't predictable. That's, like, but that, then it's like, is free will legit or is it an equation? Or is it a simulation? See, we won't go down there. Like we won't go down there. starting that. to hurt about this. Let's, do, let's talk about our friends at Vizzy instead to cool off a little bit. Wow. Because Vizzy is a vibe and they are here for fall. If you want to have a couple conversations like this with your friends, maybe get back from the bar, your little, uh, little uh, evocative perhaps. Maybe thoughtful, getting a little creative on the back deck. Vizzy is perfect for that. For any conversation, any argument, any any discussion, have a Vizzy. 
while you're at it. Summer's phased out and it's time for something fresh during the season of change. That's autumn. While you make the transition, grab a case of Vizzy Hard Seltzers for, uh, with flavors for every vibe. Excuse me. You familiar with Vizzy Mimosas, Sally? Mm-hmm. Uh, so good. The refreshing taste of real orange juice and it's perfect for daytime sipping. It comes in strawberry, peach, uh, pineapple, and pomegranate orange. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. Good tailgate beverage for sure. They also have the OGs. Strawberry kiwi, blueberry pomegranate, black cherry lime, pineapple mango, watermelon strawberry, raspberry tangerine, papaya fr- passion fruit, and blackberry lemon. Are we having Vizzies this weekend? We will have plenty of Vizzies this okay. weekend. Just, no. We will drink sure. them responsibly, obviously. Yes. But there will, there will be Vizzies on tap for There'll sure. There will be Vizzies available. Vizzies will be available to the general public, yes. Cool. Actually, not the general public. It's just invited people. The people who the are people. invited. Yeah, that's right. Of which you're one of them. Me and Randy. Vizzy Hard Seltzer. Flavors for every vibe. Please stock up on Vizzy and show some love for the show uh, by going to the following links. VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash washed to find Vizzy near you. That's VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash washed. And to hear about the latest flavor drops and more, sign up at VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash subscribe. You must be 21 plus. Celebrate responsibly. Molson Coors Beverage Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay, ready, Sally? Mm Mm-hmm. My girlfriend has been gone for the past month and a half uh, with her family in Europe. I don't know. I said like that. Europe. Europe. Uh, She comes back next week, and here's the thing. I don't know if I've actually missed her. We've been dating for about two years, and since she's been gone, I've been able to save a lot more money, spend more time with friends and family, and get back to hobbies that I really enjoyed prior to the relationship. So here's my question. Over a long period of time, is it normal not to miss someone, or is there something wrong with this relationship? I'll start by saying there's nothing wrong about this. But is there a lot right? Okay. <clears throat> We're talking honeymoon I could phases. see. I could see both, okay? Like, I think when you have been with someone for a long time, it's nice to enjoy your time apart from that person. Mm-hmm. And that's normal to need your own space. Sure. Um, am I... A tad concerned you haven't missed her? Yeah. Yeah. I think if you were just like, oh, okay, it's been nice to like get back into my own hobbies and like hang out with my friends I don't see that much. I'd be like, okay, you just need to like make more time for yourself and Mm -hmm. your relationship. But the fact that he isn't like missed her and is like excited for her to come home is a little concerning. A month and a half is a long time. If you haven't missed her over a weekend, Okay. Yeah. What like a month and a half is a long time. I'm not saying you'd be like, oh my God, I need you in my life every single day. Mm-hmm. Like some people are like that. Me being that person. <laughs> but some people are way more independent and less like needy than I am. But I also think like even like some of my friends that I don't see in six weeks, I'm like, man, I really miss you. Like we need we gotta hang out. Like mm-hmm. and it's your significant other. Here's the yeah. thing, though. Like, how's how's your life? Will your life change for the worse if you break up with her? Like, are you gonna just be really sad and lonely after that? Like, the well, saving money thing to me, I'm kind of like that's stupid. I, like, that's great that you're saving money, but like, if you get another significant other, you're probably just gonna right spend the money the same yeah, amount yeah, of yeah. money. I just think it's it's one of those things that when you when you realize that you, the time you could be spending with that person is spent on things that you, like, it, it's an easy way to fall into being like, oh, this is nice. Like, I missed doing this. Yeah. Like, my friends, my family, my hobbies, et cetera, which kind of takes the place of that person. And once it takes the place of a person, it makes it much easier to not miss them as much Mm -hmm. and that's where we are right now so here's my question i do you are does he already know 
that he wants to break up with her? Like, do probably. You, do you yeah. write into the mail in asking if you should break Ooh, up with sorry, your girlfriend? Sorry, I was looking you... at the camera. I'm going to look at the camera too. Do you? Do, do you write into the mail in wondering? What, what do you think? If you should break up what with your you, girlfriend, you if you do? don't already feel like you should break up with your girlfriend, like. This seems like kind of a cut and dry situation to me. Like, I think you, this was a uh, quite the test for his old uh, this our old friend here. But like, are you just seeking validation that like maybe you just need to break up with her? Because that's the thing. I yes, it's possible to like want your alone time, need independence, spend time apart, and still be in a healthy functioning relationship. Sure, but if you're already questioning like. I don't really miss her. Is this normal? Mm -hmm. Thinking about breaking up with her. You probably already answered your own question. Yeah. Yeah. Is it normal to not miss someone? Sure. Over this period of time, a little less sure. And because you've already sort of replaced her time with you with other stuff, I mean, kind of know where this is going. But maybe, maybe he's just one of those people that like, I, I think what happened here is he great relationship. He he likes her, but once she's been gone, he had to fill that void of time and the stuff that he filled the void with is equally, if not more, enjoyable. So that's why Yeah. So again, the relationship could have nothing wrong with it, but you've just realized that you were missing other stuff. Yeah. And maybe months will go by and you'll be like, oh, now I miss her again because the other once the other stuff wears off a little bit in sort of how much you enjoy it, like diminishing returns type of thing. So or again, like yeah, I, there's nothing I wrong across the board. It's just dating and it, <clears throat> presumably in love with like you want to be able to keep that that spark dis, despite time. Yeah, and that's not always possible like you mm -hmm. you're not gonna have the same like fiending for somebody that yeah the honey, honeymoon effect there's honeymoon but at the same time like i personally need to always feel like i'm connected to somebody like i you know the person that i'm with in this case will hopefully forever uh is like if he's gone, I miss him. You know mm, what I'm saying? Yes, but there are some people whose just personalities don't work like that. Like, is that what? What's what? The, is that a love language? Like, what? Like codependence? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like wanting to be missed? I guess is that words of affirmation? I think that's words of affirmation. Okay. Interesting. But like, not to get all like mushy and like say a bunch of stuff about Wills and I relationship, but like we text each other like a thousand times a day. Mm -hmm. Like, and like, we'll say shit. Like, I love you. I can't wait to see you tonight. Like, I love that. Like, Will's probably so embarrassed that I'm going to admit this, but like, I mean, that's just how our relationship is. Not everyone's like that. No. Some people, Some people don't speak to their spouses all day. All day. Yeah. Some people can't. Some but people I also don't. Some like people... talk to my mom like 17 times a day. So mm -hmm. like, maybe that's just who I am. Yeah. You're, you're a talker. I don't know if that's going to reflect very well for me on the Reddit. People are going to be like, Sally's so crazy. Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. You can cut that part out, Randy. If you want. <laughs> um, let's go to the next one. I think we kind of danced around that one as much as we could. I think he wants to break up with her. I do too. <laughs> okay. Good way to end it. Uh, hey, guys. Is there any argument against October being the best month? In my opinion, it absolutely is the best month, no doubt. But I figured y'all would disagree with me, so here's your opportunity. So let's get in month fights. October is the best month. That's my problem. I, I agree with this person. October is up there for me. Best I've... sports month by, by a mile. Not even close. Weather is tough because here it's not cold yet. Yeah. So weather is like, weather it's top top five, but it's certainly not top. Two or three, I would say. Mm -hmm. Holidays, mid. Halloween's meh for me. I just like the party. Yeah, so I'm, no, it's not the best month. but What's it, your it, best month? Probably December. Randy, what's your best Randy, month? Randy just gave an audible. Randy, what was that? Just an audible like, pfft. Yeah. Randy, just say like July. 
That's exactly what I'm going to no, say. Ugh. It's 109 degrees every day. You can't say July. Fourth of July is awesome. Fourth of July is a good holiday. It's not a top five holiday. I think November is my favorite month. November is probably number two for me. So uh, October <clears throat> it really gets up there for me because October mm -hmm. kicks off a great season for me. The holiday season, but also starting to feel like fall in Texas. Yeah. Towards the end. But like. I, I, that's what I was gonna say. For for people who live in Texas, I don't know that October is my favorite month weather wise. You get a lot right, more yeah. crispy fall days in November than you do in October. Agreed, totally agree. But if you live in Texas, I agree. Great sports, but arguably, again, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. Some of the football matchups in November cannot be beat. I'm talking college rivalries, which I am noted. College football fan. Okay? Right. So the biggest. Obviously. But like I also don't really care about professional sports as much. So I don't care mm -hmm. about any of the like major league baseball stuff coming going. I mean, like, okay. I'll watch it, but it's not yeah. like yeah, yeah. my time, you know. Mm -hmm. I but I get why people say that October's the best sports month. That makes sense to me. Like mm -hmm. you literally are getting all the sports. I mean, the uh, sports equinox, they call it. Yeah. So that's hard to beat if you're like super into sports. Sure. Or whatever. Uh I'm a noted pumpkin lover. Like, and I loved pumpkin okay. before basic people love pumpkin, Ooh. even though I am basic. It's like the Lumineers. What? Loved, loved the Lumineers before they were the Lumineers. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to say like, You're oh, I hipster. love pumpkin first more than you. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying I've always loved pumpkin. Like since I was a kid, pumpkin pie has always been my favorite pie. Okay. Unless it's key lime. Key lime, what? Oh, key limes ahead of pumpkin is what you're saying? I mean, they're tied probably. T1, okay. Uh, so that's a reason to love October, in my opinion. I think if I live in Saratoga, where I'm from, October is my favorite month, followed closely by December. But that being said, the best six-month or six-week uh, six stretch of the year, or the best month stretch, this is the best four weeks of any time is Thanksgiving to Christmas. So I I personally, here's why I'm going to argue for November. Okay. November, you get the fall. Yeah. You get Weather. the coziness of Thanksgiving. Yeah. You get the excitement for Christmas, but without the like being rushed. Okay. You okay. get to like enjoy the Hallmark, Hallmark movies and like maybe you're a person oh, like me who like puts their tree up early. Mm, but okay. you don't have the like we've got to cram so much shit into every single day because it's december and now we have to like have a holiday happy hour at every moment oh, you wait. still get like can't the wait. laziness of like we're just we're not there we're yet into it okay. although corporate america is trying to fuck that up for all of us like literally Boy. the other day i was like oh sorry you can edit me out or whatever no i'm i'm i love the fire here uh hit me it's like Oh, like now you have to have Black Friday in October. Like, do we need to? Do we need, like, do I need no. the Christmas lights to already be up? No. Can we chill out for a hot second, everyone? Like, every year. It's every think, year, it's a I week think earlier. It's acceptable in November to like start getting pumped for Christmas, but like, let's mm -hmm. not forget about Thanksgiving, people. It's a dope ass holiday. It's a great holiday. It's a great holiday. Um, it's it's behind Christmas for me, but it, but the excitement like it's still up there. I mean, it, it is because I think right I really love the anticipation of Christmas and November. You really just relish in that. You're like, okay, well, it's not even December yet, but like we're still getting pumped. And then December, yeah. you almost like don't have time because it's just like Man, a mad maybe, dash. Maybe, maybe that's just maybe happened. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I know because it, it's more about. I'm the here excitement. to tell everyone. You're here to spread the gospel. Thanksgiving. We wish you a holiday. merry Thanksgiving. Uh, from Sally and Co. Let's do a Thanksgiving card this year from the Mail In Podcast. I mean, <laughs> there are so many reasons why Thanksgiving is the best holiday. I think the food is better than Christmas. The fits are great. The fits are better than Christmas. The weather is better than Christmas. Yeah. You don't get presents, so that's a knock. The you know it's low the key movies rooting? are better like that that stuff, but the cozy factor because it's still late fall and Thanksgiving, it's you still have Christmas to look forward high. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an argument. I'll, I'll. But I, I will also agree with this person that October is great. I, I'm gonna say if I had to pick, like my birthday is in July, 
I love July 4th, but like July is never going to be up there for me unless I like lived somewhere like Harbor Springs, yeah, Michigan. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But like, it's it's too hot. <laughs> it's too hot here for that to it's be. It's too hot. Month. It is way too hot. But I think it also changes as you like what depending on what age you are. Like if if you would have asked me like in college what my favorite month is, I probably would have said something like May because like school was ending. You know, like mm-hmm. we were, summer was starting, like that was like, that's when you feel like the most free because you like really are like done with finals and shit. Like, I think I've ranked the months before. That's what I'm trying to find I, right here. I low key actually really enjoyed the month of April. Ooh. Which is like a shocking one. But I think as I've gotten older, there's a lot of things in April that I really enjoy. Interesting. Why but, is that? Because it's like, I think because, like, in Texas, you're starting to, like, really – it's, like, you're really starting to get the taste for, like, warm weather, which hasn't burned you in months. So you feel like you're excited about, like, the start of pool season. You can, like, wear fun spring colors. Yeah. Like, yeah. now Fritz was born in April, so that's always Oh, helpful. yeah, Fritz man. You've got the Masters on. Like, usually you've got some, like, fun spring activities planned. I don't know. I just – I enjoy an April month, you know? I think my least favorite month. It's March. Oh, I was gonna say February. It's February and March, and that's because uh, that it, for me it was the weather in Saratoga because it was like yeah. the the season of melt. See, I still like March. Yeah. I think February for me is just that weird in between month. We were like, okay, like D- you know what? And it's so funny how I'm, I'm like I'm kind of going through these in my head. It it totally depends on where I am. It's it's geographically but i february is always a nothing burger month for me that's true you get the super bowl you get valentine's day president's day and um black history month and it's not even about the holidays as i think it's just just too short and i'm just like you're never like doing really cool shit in february no i did get married in february and we always like take an anniversary trip but every time i do it i'm like why are we traveling in february yeah february kind of a nothing burger uh ski trips maybe but it's like maybe too late for them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you'll be, you'll be in good shape if you're in the West, especially. Because February is, I think, sneaky, the snowiest month in Saratoga. I don't know. I don't maybe know. that's right. I don't go on a ski trips to care, to be honest with you. Last February time we went me. on a ski trip, we famously ushered in COVID. And I scratched my And you scratched retina. your cornea. Yeah. Cornea. Retina? Cornea? One cornea. Of, one it was my cornea. Time. Retina's way worse. Uh-oh. But I couldn't see for days. <laughs> I don't know. I'll I'll go to November. October is probably number. I think it's in my top three. Probably. <clears throat> yeah, it probably top goes five. December, October, November. Man, but those you really can't go wrong. This is my favorite time of year. Quarter wise, this quarter blows every other quarter out of the yeah. water. Like not even close. Uh, let's do the last one, Sal. Hey, mail and crew. I just booked a trip to New York. Oh, this is this is we're returning to our travel question for number six. <laughs> Uh, just booked a trip to New York for this December. This will be my first time to the city, and I think I'm severely underestimating what I'll need to do to be prepared. What kind of fits can I get off? For reference, I'm a 27-year-old guy. Sally, feel free to give me some takes for the ladies. What are must-see slash must-do items? How can I make my first time to the Big Apple the best? Help me out, Fred and Sally. New York, New York, Sally. Okay. Sneaky, one of my favorite weekends that we've ever had was when Will and I went to New York, like the first weekend of December. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. Uh, It was not snowing yet, still like fall weather, Mm -hmm. but all the Christmas stuff was up, so that was really fun. Yeah. Uh, We had a great time. Did a lot of random shit. It's been a really long time since I, I think, that wasn't the last time I was in New York, but it was, when was that? Like seven years ago when we did that Damn. weekend. Okay. Not the last time I've been there. But you and Will have been together for so long. I, I know. It's, just like, it's like wild. 2015. To think about. Yeah. Uh, you can still get off really great fall fits. Personally, mm-hmm. I, I know Will talked about this on Sunday Scaries last week about Meg Ryan fall, but I think you can basically essentially copy Billy Crystal's entire wardrobe from When Harry Met Sally and like not go wrong. Ooh, that's a good one. Cable knits and, and yeah. et cetera. Yeah, it is the best Get time a of year nice, to go. Like a nice overcoat. I'm you know, not like, one for, I, and I lived there for three years. So this is, this is 
changing my answer. I, I, I don't recommend like the touristy stuff in the winter. The biggest touristy things I would do is Christmas related. Yeah. Like go Park Ave, go see all the lights, go see the Rockefeller Christmas tree. It's cool. Go just like Christmas in New York or that season specifically yeah. is so, it's ma- it's magic. Like it, it feels like magic because you've seen it in all the movies. We did and it yeah. was not a problem. We One of my favorite things that we did is we had brunch on the Upper East Side and then walked through Central Park oh, and it lovely. was like 40 something degrees out. So it was, mm-hmm. it was like really nice still. And it was a beautiful fall day. And we were just like walking around, taking in the sights. And that's, that's when you really feel like do, yeah. you're legit in a movie. Yeah. That's, and then that's, you end at like the plaza slash then you can like walk over to Rockefeller or see the yep. tree. And you don't have to like be so immersed in it and like go ice skating and shit. You can just no, like walk no, around. No, no, no. Don't spend $60 to ice skate on a rink that's slush. So then, but then like 9,000 people. Some of the friends that I went with went to Rolf's. Yeah, Christmas bar. Which I'm kind of like, they were like, it was packed. It was first weekend of December, still insanely packed. Very Is much, it worth yeah. it? Like, mm, probably it's, not. It's cool to like walk by. It, it's not, you know. I just feel like there's a lot of other cozier Christmassy places. Every every place is decked out in Christmas stuff. You don't every need to place, go to Rolf's to get every like place a is cozy. Santa, yeah. s- Santa gasm in your face. Like that's that's what Rolf's is. You, you don't need to do that. No, the whole the whole weekend was the like, Christmas. it was just the best. It's the best. I maybe I'll, I'll have to do that. This this I like would love. I winter. really that was one trip that we took that I was like we're gonna make this a yearly thing with like my friends and then we have yet to go back mm-hmm. together all together uh, that weekend. Yeah. It, so, what are must see must do items? Get really good food. Walk around the city as much as you possibly can. I love a walking tour. Like my favorite thing to do in a city. We talk about this all the time. Is literally just walk around and like. Have places kind of in mind that you maybe want to stop by, but mm-hmm. then like also be really open to just like walking into a place and getting a drink because that's how you I, – I know that like I'm only like basically eating and drinking the whole time, but you're walking mm-hmm. around so you're getting to see the city still. Yeah, totally. Like, that's how I love to take in a city on a leisurely mm-hmm. day. Like that's my favorite thing to do. A nice crisp day. You get like your best outfit off. For this guy, I'll, I'll recommend maybe you get like a nice pea coat or like a overcoat, trench coat. Wool yeah. coat. What do they do? Like bankers coats, maybe they're called now. I maybe love like a, a like an overshirt, you know, like a mm, thick. Yeah. Some people will call them shackets. I don't think that that's necessary. Just like a good, like, I don't know. Slide in my DMs, uh, 27 year old guy. I will shoot you some links to stuff that I've had my eye on uh, for when it gets colder. Or listen to retail therapy. Or listen to retail therapy featuring Will DeFreeze and Barrett Dudley. Um, yeah, now I want to go to New York in December. Damn I it. do, I do too. Well, I'm gonna have to. The time. Yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, pencil it in for next year. I'm gonna have to weave that into my holiday travel. Yeah, so, night or two in New York, head home. It's a real Christmas. enjoyable time, uh, and it's great if you want to go shopping. It's, it's like lovely. He's a 27 year old guy, so absolutely he lovely. Want to. Oh, get a pair of boots too. Like a, not not Texas boots, like uh, New York boots, Chelsea boots. Yeah, much more. Um, Cosmopolitan, I guess. Yeah. It's kind of the word I'm looking for. Sure. Get a pair of boots. A pair of corduroys. Or you can be finance, bro, and just wear a vest over everything. A little, a little cold for a vest at that point. Yeah, you got to have a vest plus other you shit. You got to have a puff vest, other shit. Hat, a good hat. You know what's the popular look now and has been for a couple of years is the hoodie. Mm-hmm. Like a male hoodie. I'm not, I'm not good. Male, the hoodies aren't gendered. You know what I mean? A guy wearing a hoodie with a overcoat uh-huh. on top of that, like a nice, nice coat with a casual hoodie situation. That's a look now. Mm-hmm. It has been for a while. Ugh, I'm going to have to go to New York now. That's just this this voicemail. Just Walk around crazy. Central Park. That's like the best. Go to the Gem Saloon. Ask for Sean. Tell him you know me. We'll take care of you. What if I was just like, go to Bagatelle? <laughs> Go to Bagatelle. Uh, what are some other five star places in New York? No, kidding. Don't do that. Go to a dive bar. That's Christmassy. Anyway, Sally, that's going to do us for uh, questions for us today. Any shower thoughts before we get out of here? No, this hoodie is really comfortable. So, what are you going to be for Halloween for the Merriman Spooky Monster Bash? I don't know yet. To be honest with you, we Will got has Fridge's costume. Will's which I feel moniker, happy by about. the way, he's kind of got. Mail in Halloween costume vibes the last couple of years. I know what he's gonna be. 
at least for spooky season. Oh. But uh, we don't have like a good, I mean, I don't think we're going to have a couple's costume situation. That's okay. We don't need one. Fritz and Bane are being Tommy and Chucky. That's going to be very good. That's going to be very good. So I considered going as like one of the Rugrats parents or something. Mm -hmm. But Stu's got purple hair. I don't want to deal with that really. It's tough. Angelica, is that the other one? Yeah, no. there's no like redheaded ones. I don't want to buy a wig. That's just yeah. Halloween. I feel pretty meh about. Like I'm never super excited about a costume. I I have a couple costumes. Like I did MGK last year. I'm gonna do beep this year. Yeah, pretty excited about it. But it's like once I once I blow these three or four that I have like lined up that kind of match my appearance. When I'm like 35, I got nothing. So. Yeah, it's way more know. about my kid now. Yeah. True. True. Last question. Do you, uh, should I go mummy pigs in a blanket or spooky buffalo chicken meatball pumpkins for an appetizer? I love a pig in a blanket. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it. You and Randy both said pigs in a blanket. So they're easier to pop in your mouth, too. They are. They are. Less mess. Less mess. Anyway, that'll do it for us today. Sally on the mail-in podcast. Please subscribe, rate five stars, review, and tell a friend about the show. Hit the hotline number 888-362-MAIL. That's 888-362-6245. Or you can write in at the link in the Twitter bio at mail-in podcast. Sally, where can the people find you? Sally DeFries on Instagram and Twitter. I am at Schmerriman on both of those platforms. And yeah, that's it. Got nothing else. That's it. Good episode. Thank you, Randy. On the ones and twos, thank you, Adam, for clipping this episode afterwards, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.